All right, part two in these mini tutorials, we, we talked about the wiggle effect so that we can get flickering firelight or other randomized movement. Um, another cool one that I've been playing with, and to keep this a mini tutorial, I'm gonna go kind of quick through some of this stuff and just give you the steps that it takes to replicate. Um, in this scene, I have a, the, the background image is just a still image. And then we use the wiggle stuff from the last mini tutorial for the, the flickering in the windows. But this is, this is the part that we're focusing on for this video. It's this water effect. You got a very realistic looking water ripple with even with the reflections. And there's a few different steps to get this done. And once again, I'm not gonna go into too deep into why or what, just walk through the steps of creating that water effect. So let me find a good scene that we could use. In fact, I'll probably just use that same picture at the blue bayou. If I can find it, let's see. There it is, Bayou. And let's just create a new composition for this. We've got this cool blue Bayou scene. We've got some water down here and we want to have some of that ripple. I think I'm going to zoom in on this to get closer to the water part. All right, you ready for the fun? These are the steps you got to go through to make the ripple effect. First thing we're going to do is, let me get rid of my zoom control so they're out of my way. First thing we're going to do is create a new solid layer. Probably doesn't matter on the color, but I'm going to do black. That's going to end up being our ripple itself, the water ripple. And the water, it's it, the surface of the water is at an angle. So I'm going to make it a, a 3D object and rotate it so that the surface of this layer is like the surface of the water in the picture. Here we go. Then I'm going to add an effect called fractal noise. There's a whole bunch of different types of noise and displacements and yada, yada, yada. Um, fractal noise is the one I'm going to use. Bunch of different options here. I'm going to go with dynamic and linear. And I'm going to use an expression again here to save me from having to do a whole bunch of uh, keyframes. Uh, because right now, this doesn't actually move. It doesn't do anything. It's just the, the fractal noise is just on the surface of that black layer. Uh, but to make it move over time, I'll hold down Alt and press the stopwatch next to evolution. And the expression we're going to use here is time asterisk and then you can choose a number, which will be how quickly it goes. Um, let's try 250 and see how that works, how that looks. I can hit the space bar, and now you can see that it's starting to get that movement. Going to do the same thing on evolution options. Hold down Alt, press the stop key, time times 250. And see what that does. Looking pretty good so far. We're done with that. Now we're going to go to layer and add an adjustment layer on top of that. And to this one, we're going to add turbulent displace. And you can see kind of what the turbulent displace does by playing around with these numbers right here. Um, and then there's some other options you can play with. We actually, we actually use this effect as well on our Candleman over here. If you've seen those videos, we had a, a full-size six foot tall Raleigh Crump Candleman that had this wax that was dripping down. And that was using this the same method. We just played with the properties a bit. Okay. All right, and, and similar to what we did on the ripple layer, Alt stopwatch next to evolution times uh, time asterisk 250. Now we're seeing that kind of cool warpy thing going on here. Now you'll notice too, though, that it's also applying to the background image, which I don't want. So I'm going to take those two new layers that I added and put them into a pre-composition for Ripple. Now it's only going to do it on that layer instead of the entire picture. One last step. I'm going to add another adjustment layer. And on this one, we are going to call, we're going to apply a displacement map effect. 
for the, the map layer, we'll choose that ripple one that we've been creating, that ripple layer. And let's make the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement luminescent. And now all we need to do is hide that ripple. And we have, we have it working. The adjustment layer and that ripple layer are all applied to, to the water. Now, the, it's also bleeding over onto these plants and everything, basically anywhere that solid layer was. Um, this is where you can now, though, add some masks to it. So it's only showing up to where you want it to. So if I wanted it to be in this section here, then, then I can draw a mask for it. At least that's what I thought. I might have to add it here too. Let's try that real quick. Add a quick mask. There we go. The mask on the right place. I'm curious too, actually, while, while we're doing this, if I delete this mask, does it need it on both or just one? Okay, it might be hard to see on YouTube. Let me zoom in a little. It worked with just the mask on the adjustment layer, which is cool. So now I've got the ripple on the water where I want it. And if it's not getting the height or the speed or the randomness, any of those kinds of things, if you want to tweak it, then that's where you can go back into to the to the fractal noise or the displacement or the uh, the turbulent noise and play with that till you get the desired effect. The one that we had um, for our blue bayou, I ended up liking. It was just subtle enough, but but looks good too. I like how that looked. So oh, there you go. Um, a couple new layers and options that you can do to create your own uh, ripple. Um, other applications for this besides water, you could use this for a heat distortion. If you have a flame and you want to have that, those heat waves, that's something you can do. So once again, uh, think creatively about how you can apply these different effects, the adjustment layer, the, the noise and displacement map and, and uh, the time expression, and then create some cool stuff. Now, if you... Now we, we brushed over a lot of the basics in After Effects in these videos, because this is a mini tutorial. Uh, you can look at the other mini tutorials that we have on the channel, or if you wanna do a, a deep dive and a more comprehensive dive into projection mapping in Adobe After Effects, then we have an online course that covers the entire projection mapping process. And I'll put a link to that in the description if you'd like to take a look at that.